This is Marianne Martindale from the Alliance for a Better Utah, and welcome to the Better Utah Beat. With the remaining Utah ballots finally counted, we found out something even more surprising than some of the election results. Despite enormous pushes by both the Utah Democratic and Republican parties for higher voter turnout, Utahns actually turned out to vote in the same number as they did in 2008. Four years ago, in the last presidential election year, 57.1% of eligible Utah citizens turned out to vote for either John McCain or Barack Obama. This year, analysts, media, Democrats, and Republicans alike all predicted that with Mitt Romney, Utah's adopted son at the top of the ticket, the turnout would explode. As it turns out, the number of voters actually dropped a tenth of a percent to a flat 57%. Thirty years ago, Utah voter turnout was well above the national average, coming in consistently around 60 to 70%. But those numbers have steadily declined. Even more disconcerting than the actual number is the fact that the lieutenant governor's office is trying to play with those numbers in an attempt to make our turnout percentage look better by factoring it only against registered voters they deem as active rather than against the actual number of voting age Utahns. The fact remains, Utah is one of the lowest performing states in the country. There are a lot of reasons why so many residents of the Beehive State choose not to participate in our democracy. The Utah Foundation recently released a report saying that because the state is so Republican dominant, many potential voters may not participate because they feel like their vote doesn't really matter. Even the Romney factor may have had the adverse effect of turning some people away because of the loudly proclaimed presumption of his assured Utah landslide. Some Tea Party groups say that people have developed a mistrust of all things government. Other groups have said that some fault may lie with the legislature, who have shown a remarkable ability to upset the people nearly every year by passing bills like school vouchers, anti-transparency, or eliminating sex education in schools. But easily, the most credible among the different theories is a report released by the Governor's Commission on Strengthening Democracy, which was created by former Governor John Huntsman, Jr. The commission reported that citizens in Utah face some of the heaviest voting restrictions among all states. Unlike many of our neighboring states, potential voters in Utah face many obstacles to exercise their right to participate in elections. Utah was one of the first states in the nation to pass a controversial voter ID law, a law that has become an unfortunate model for other states. States like Florida, whose Republican leaders such as former Governor Charlie Crist and former Republican State Chairman Jim Greer just this week admitted that the goal of voter ID laws was to suppress minority and Democratic votes. These laws use the unfounded claims of voter fraud as their excuse, but those truly impacted by these laws are elderly citizens, students, and low-income residents who may not have the adequate identification required for registering. State legislators have also stopped bills from the left side of the aisle that could have significant impact on voter turnout. Bills such as automatic voter registration when obtaining a driver's license or filing taxes, same-day registration to allow people to register on Election Day, and creating easier access to absentee ballots for deployed military personnel. Instead, our legislators seem to believe, as Representative Greg Hughes stated during the last legislative session, quote, it's not our job to make it any easier for people to participate. Many of these proposals are coming up again in the all-too-soon 2013 legislative session, and the Alliance for a Better Utah will be encouraging lawmakers to support these critical issues. In the end, whether people are voting for a Democrat, Republican, or an Independent, the more important thing is to make sure that as many people as possible have the ability to participate in our democracy. That should be a principle we can all agree on. Until next week, this is Marianne Martindale from the Alliance for a Better Utah with this week's edition of The Better Utah Beat. Have a great week. And remember that together, we can make a better Utah.